If you haven't seen our last video, let me catch you up real quick on what we're doing here. We are riding our bikes across Iowa with 20,000 of our friends in an event called RAGBRAI. Yesterday's 53 mile ride was all about learning the RAGBRAI way, learning that Iowa is not flat and trying not to get run over by the more experienced riders. Today's 72 mile ride will push us further than we have ever ridden before and the weather will create a surprising challenge as well. We'll try new things, new food, and make new friends along the way. Welcome to day two of Rag Ride. All right, it's a Rag Ride day two. We have, I think, 72 miles today and about 1,700 feet of climb. So, should be a good day. Each day has its own specific challenge that's associated with it. Yesterday was day one being the first day, so just like getting used to how Ragbrai works was the challenge. Today's challenge is the distance. 72 miles is two or three miles more than we've ever ridden at one time before. Uh, so, we'll see how it goes. We started day two with a 20 mile journey from Ida Grove to Galva. Right outside of Ida Grove, we were met with our first major incline. All right, first hill of the day. Gonna wake up our legs, first thing in the morning. First major hill, I am located, because my legs are not awake yet. Ugh. Ida Grove is the largest town we've been in, I feel like, so far, even though it's only like the second town. But with that, it takes a little while just to get out of town. Luckily, about 10 miles from Galva, there was a place to stop and refill our water. All right, we stopped to get some water and a little snack. We have like nine miles, I think, till the next town. So far, so good this morning. So we are a little over 11 miles in this morning, and we've already done about one third of the elevation climb for today, which is nuts, because we are going like 72 miles. Thank you. All right, so when I woke up this morning, I really had to poop. And I went to the bathroom, and there was like a line of 300 people. And so I was like, it's only eight miles to the first town. I'll hold it. About 10 miles in, I saw a sign that said, next town, nine miles. It's been a long 20 miles, but we're rolling in. Rolling in to Galva. We are rolling into Galva, the first town of the day, and I have zero idea where TJ is. So this should be fun. So impressed with the rollerblades. Took off and left me. Oh, I think I see him. Yeah, there he is. What's up? We made it. We made it. Once we arrived in Galva, TJ took care of some much needed business, if you know what I mean. This is the line for the bathroom. Just a little look, a little bit longer. It's a long line for the bathroom. We quickly learned that these long days with lots of miles would make our bodies function a little differently than normal. Okay, great news is Galva was a whole lot closer than we thought. We thought we had like six more miles, but we didn't. We're already here, so that's awesome. Everyone's just rolling in, getting some breakfast. It's really nice this morning. It's only 63 degrees and we have cloud cover, which makes it just perfect. Okay, it seriously took TJ like 30 minutes just to get through the line to go to the bathroom. One guy alone took like 15 minutes to use the bathroom. And when I got in there, it was just about stopped up. Feel bad for the people who were in line behind me. So I think we're gonna roll on to the next town before we eat anything like substantial, more than just a little snack, because um, it's only like six miles. Six miles to the next town, and I think it's all uphill. So that's the plan now. Those people were riding three to a bike. Okay, walking up this hill. We stopped for like half an hour. I just stood around and my legs, my muscles got cold, I guess. Ooh, man. 
We're gonna need to warm back up. All right, I'm back here by myself, just climbing this hill. I don't know what today is. It's crazy, when we were training, I rode faster than him. I ride faster than TJ, so when I'm behind him, I have to take it easy. That's okay, I could use the brake sometimes. It's hard work pulling this team all the time, but someone's gotta do it. And then we started yesterday, and he just took off. And uh, good for him. I don't know why, it's just all of a sudden different, but we're rolling with it. I think I see the top. Then again, I thought I saw the top back there, and I didn't. I think TJ's at the top waiting for me. TJ! I got a little bit of ink on what, what do you think you're doing? After we left Galva, we headed seven miles down the road to the Iowa popcorn capital of Schaller, where of course we ate some popcorn. We got free popcorn, which is awesome because popcorn is like one of my favorite snacks. But also, the salt just never tastes better than when you've been sweating a lot. Man, this is perfectly timed. There was a sign like a mile back that said pie, one mile. And even though it's like, in the morning, pie has never sounded so good. We also thought we were going to get our first taste of some pie, which Ragbri is famous for. No matter the time of day, you can usually find someone selling pie. All right, so we waited in that line for pie, and when we got up to the front, they ran out of pie. And so we got these things. I'm not as sure exactly what it is. One of them's like a Rice Krispie Treat looking thing, and the other one's a peanut butter bar. So, we'll see how they are. While we didn't get any pie, we did get some other homemade treats that were pretty great. It's not pie, but it's still pretty good. We got that little snack, and got some more water, and it's starting to rain. Hopefully it stops, but we have about 12 miles till the next town. Let's go. After leaving the popcorn capital of Iowa, we set course to the next town of Nemaha which was about 12 miles away. This little town is approximately two blocks long and here we were introduced to the sag wagon. If you have issues riding on the course or if you can't finish or if you're tired and you just don't wanna ride anymore, they have something called the sag wagon and they trailer your bike into the, the town, the next town, so you can get it repaired or pick it up. Mary Catherine and I have one goal outside of finishing this thing, and that is to not ride the sad wagon. I just called it the sad wagon, the sag wagon, although it's kind of sad if you ride it. Try not to ride that thing. So one of the coolest things about Ragbri is we are here, we've got cornfields all around us, and then at this random person's house behind me, they've got music and beer and all sorts of meat and all sorts of just stuff that you can eat and everyone just kind of hangs out here for a little bit before they keep going. It's like the coolest thing to be just in the middle of nowhere. I could not tell you where we are in Iowa. And here we are just at someone's house, hanging out. I'm climbing this hill by myself. I'm having some gear issues. They're shifting without me touching the gear shifter every few seconds. It's not good. At least one day, I'm gonna get me a pork chop from Mr. Pork Chop. I just met somebody else from Little Rock. How cool is that? Day two, world's getting smaller. We didn't stop long in Nemaha before heading out to the meeting town of Newell, 11 miles away. Here, we met up with my dad for lunch. Well, we made one pit stop for TJ to do one of the craziest things on our rag ride journey so far. I just saw a sign for a slip and slide. Slip and slide? It said naked slip and slide. Then the naked part was crossed off. TJ has stopped. Oh my word. Check this out. I'm gonna see if Mary Catherine wants to ride it. That kind of looks painful, actually. Mary Catherine's not going, but I'm going. I couldn't resist. How can you resist a giant slip and slide in the middle of Iowa? This could be a really bad idea. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> I can't see it. Woo! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well worth it. You don't want to do it, are you sure? Yeah. That was fun. Alright, let's keep going. 
Just a little blood. A little blood hurt nobody. Now that I'm soaking wet and the wind's blowing, I'm about to get on my bike. And the wind's gonna be blowing a lot more. I'm starting to question my decisions. Yeah, cause it's like maybe 70 degrees out here. It's been in the 60s all day. Went in rag rye. We're at a bike shop, mobile bike shop, and they are gonna fix my hairs. They said I need a new cable or something, so. We're in the right place. I'm so glad. After arriving in Newell, we put some much needed air in our tires. We've got our pit crew working here. Ate lunch and relaxed for a bit before riding to Fonda 10 miles away. People are so friendly here at Rag Brian. This guy just came up and gave me some Twizzlers. It started to rain pretty hard, so we put our cameras away and missed recording one of the biggest moments of the entire week the wreck. Okay, well, we've ridden uh, about 20 miles since lunch, and it's been raining most of the time, so we haven't filmed at all, but we have things to catch you up on. But for now, ice cream. Thank you. How is it? It's fantastic. We have nine miles left. We've gone 63. This is perfect. It's been raining quite a bit since lunch, so we put the GoPros away. Even though the GoPro itself is waterproof, we have these little microphones on them. Pretty sure they can't get wet. So we haven't filmed anything, but you guys have missed a lot. Because I fell off of my bike in the middle of the road. I'm okay. We were coming up on some train tracks, and it had been raining, and so it was wet. And there was people standing out there, because there had already been some people fall, and they were like, slow down, slow down. Like, be really careful going over the train tracks. We're like, oh, thank you so much for letting us know. And I still wiped out. It was the scariest thing ever. She was behind me. All I heard was pow. And I, I knew what happened. I like slammed on my brakes and jumped off my bike. Luckily, she's okay. Yeah, I wish we had a camera on TJ's face <laughs> when I fell. My hands hurt. They're not skinned up. They hurt. My hip hurts. That's where I landed on. I think I'm gonna have a nice bruise there. And I cut my finger and my knee had a little tiny scrape, but that's it. And I mean, a little road rash. I probably like fell because it was wet, but it still could have happened even if it wasn't wet. But because it was wet, I didn't like get scraped up. So I guess that's a good thing. Anyway. My ice cream's melting. All that to say, okay. the bee sting hurt the worse yesterday. Uh, the worst part about falling has been that I've been scared ever since and I'm gonna just wipe out again because the road is still wet. While we were attending to her, this peloton came up, which is a group of cyclists. One of them in the front fell, and then that domino affected the, whole, the rest of the, the pack. It was the scariest thing I've seen, but most of them were okay too. And some people from the Air Force team had stopped, and that's who helped me get my bike up and that sort of thing. And then TJ jumped in with them, and some other people had already stopped at that point to get them off the road. And then they were making people stop to cross the train tracks after that. It was crazy. Just like everybody jumping off their bikes and helping everybody else. The best news about the whole situation is that I'm pretty sure everybody who fell is okay. Maybe a little skinned up, bruised up. But I didn't see any major injuries. Well, she's in high spirits for having skidded across the railroad tracks. That's good. After our ice cream break, we rode the final 20 miles into our second overnight town of Pocahontas. Despite the wreck, we actually had a great afternoon and rode pretty fast. We even finished the day about an hour and a half earlier than we thought we would. Turn on the next street. Okay. After dinner, we were so tired, we went to bed right away and forgot to film our daily recap. Overall, day two was really fun and we ended the day extra grateful for safety and for the kindness of the Ragbrag community.